This is Bruce Jansen at the 36th Annual SDEF Hawaii Dermatology Seminar. I'm talking with Dr. Ted Rosen of Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. Uh, what tools are available to help guide how extensive a internal workup is necessary? So if we do a modest workup, I think on almost all patients that's reasonable, but I think there are some patients who require a more extensive workup. That's expensive, it's uncomfortable, but there are some staining patterns, immunostaining patterns, cytokeratin staining patterns that help us differentiate between the extramammary Paget's disease with a low risk of internal malignancy and a high risk of internal malignancy. And when the staining pattern dictates that it's a high risk of internal malignancy, those patients probably should get a very extensive workup. I also should note that if the workup is negative the first time, at least asking the questions that would be relevant to gastrointestinal or genitourinary cancer and a modest repeat something like fecal occult blood or urinalysis looking for blood would be reasonable to do several times at six to 12 month intervals after that. What is the high risk staining pattern? The high risk stain, there are two cytokeratin uh, patterns that can be seen in extra mammary pageants, cytokeratin 7 and cytokeratin 20. If both of those are positive, uh, then there's at least some reasonable increased risk of internal malignancy. If only cytokeratin 7 is positive, which is typical of all extra mammary pageant's disease, but cytokeratin 20 is negative, there's less risk. I don't want to say no risk, but less risk. And in that situation, a more modest workup, a good review of systems would be all that's required initially. How great is the risk of internal ma malignancy? Traditionally, we think of extra mammary Paget's disease being associated with internal malignancy at about the 10, 15, 20, maybe 25 percent level. Most people settle on about 15 to 20 percent. However, a recent series, it was only in men, so we can't generalize, but a recent series from MD Anderson suggested that risk could be as high as 40 percent. So we're probably missing some or not noting them. And I don't think we have an absolute number, but if you're talking about somewhere between one in four up to two in five, that's reasonably substantial and requires our attention. When the lesion is being removed surgically, uh, what is the important threshold? Well, the important thing is to make sure that the entire tumor is contained within the epidermis. And so literally the whole excisional specimen should be step sectioned. If there's any part of it where it shows that the lesion has actually extended into the dermis, that then is associated with a high risk of metastasis of the extra mammary Paget's disease and metastatic Paget's disease is a very poor prognosis. So in that case, the patient also should receive an appropriate PET scan to look for lesions outside the primary tumor area. But provided it is uh, not extending down into the dermis, that is uh, at least partial reassurance, yes? That's some reassurance that at least the primary tumor has not spread outside the area that you see, but you also have to keep in mind this is a multifocal, multicentric disorder, and so surgical excision should always be guided not only by what you see, but what you can elicit by application of some other chemical such as 5-fluorouracil or amicromod to light up spots that aren't part of the primary obvious tumor.